Speed one, take four. Speed one, take six. Welcome to the Room 12 News Reporters. Today, fifth grade students are interviewing a local Port Townsend author, Patrick Jennings. Students in Room 12 have spent the past months reading a collection of books by this highly creative, interesting individual. Come join us today for a look into this interesting, world-famous author. Welcome, Patrick. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We would like to start today by asking you some personal questions. What inspired you to become an author? I became an author probably when I was in like third, sixth grade. Sixth grade, I decided to write a play for my, my whole class. And I think what inspired me was um, really just restlessness. I, I always, I'm asking a lot of questions all the time. So I ask lots of questions, and I'm always asking questions. And then finally my teacher said, like, will you go do something um, because you're annoying me? And so I said, well, I don't know what should I do. And he said, I don't know. What do you want to do? I said, well, I want to be a lawyer. So then he let me do a fake trial, mock trial. And then I did that. And then he said, now what are you going to do with all your extra energy? And I said, well, I don't know. Can I, can I put on a play? So he said, okay, go do that. So I wrote a play, and I directed it, and I started in it. It's kind of like that. I think that's what ins what inspired me. Really, it wasn't really like inspiration, as much as it was just wanting to do something with the fact that I had too many questions. But when I to be a children's author, though, that was much later. That was when I, I was in my 30s and I was teaching preschool and I started reading children's books. As an adult, I read them as a kid, you know, but I didn't know they were children's books. Then they were just the books I liked. And but then when I read them, I thought, oh, I love these. These are great. I want to write one of these. And I was inspired by the way kids love books. Kids love books differently than adults love books. Kids love books. They go like, I love this book. And, or they go like, I don't like this book. I got a letter yesterday from a kid. <laughs> he sent me a letter. And he said, she, she, she said, um, you know, I'm supposed to, I just read your book, and I, you're usually getting letters from kids, and I bet they all like your books, but I didn't like your book. I'm sorry, but I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I laughed. I was really happy, actually. Why did you write fictional books? I like fiction because um, I can I can write about anything I want. Anything can happen, and anything can happen in, you know between the covers of a book. And so, like if a little girl wants to go home, she can build a rocket ship in her backyard. Or you know, I was interested in werewolves, and so if a boy wants to turn into a werewolf, he can. And and I, and I also like I wrote a book that was set in France in the 16th century, and so I did a bunch of research. But I always knew like if anybody ever said, you know, that's not what life was really like in the 16th century, I could always say like, yeah, but people didn't turn into werewolves either. <laughs> so, you know, you probably shouldn't get too picky. So I, it gives me some freedom. And also, I think kids really like fiction, and they read a lot of fiction. In fact, I keep I keep asking a lot of kids, you know, do you read nonfiction? Because I read a lot of nonfiction as an adult, and I don't meet too many kids who just read nonfiction for fun. Which I recommend. I do. I really like a lot of nonfiction because there's a lot of great, great stories in nonfiction. But, um, but that's why I write fiction. I think because I love it, and because kids love it, and because impossible things can happen in it. How do you come up with topics for your books? How do I come up with topics for my books? Um, they actually really get me. I don't find them. They come and get me. I, I ask myself a lot of questions all the time, like I said, and so I'm really curious, and I walk around a lot. The nice thing about being a writer is that I don't really have a lot of commitments or anything. Um, I do. I mean, I come here and I go to school visits and things like that. But for the most part, I have a lot of free time, which is what I wanted. When I decided to become a writer, I decided I wanted to like live a life where there really are no weekends and weekdays and holidays and stuff. So if you want to be a writer, you know, you get all that kind of stuff. You don't have bosses and employees and schedules and stuff. It's really great. It's like being a, an animal or something, you know. And um, so I just kind of wander around with my little notebook, which I think I sit around here somewhere. So I walk around I, with my little notebook, and um, I always keep it with me everywhere I go. And I keep it next to me at home. And uh, whenever I have an idea, I jot it down. And usually it's a question. It's like, why is that like that? Or, you know, and then I'll write it down. Or I'll, somebody will say a funny word. Like um, I, saw, I saw an apartment building once called the, the Bisbee Arms, and I remembered how buildings used to be called arms, and I wondered why, and then I came up with the beastly arms, and then um, I was thinking about 
this kid came up to me once and asked me why a werewolf was called a werewolf. What's were mean? I looked up in the dictionary, and then that led me to the wolving time, and because it, and because it had a little in the dictionary, we went to the dictionary and had this little thing about how werewolves used to be um, beneficial characters where they would be like shepherds who would turn into wolves so that they could like talk to the real wolves and say, would you leave our sheep alone? You know, and then they could actually mark the territory. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, they were wolves. They would turn into wolves and they would, you know, like mark their territory. You know, lift their leg. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and keep the other wolves away, you know. And, you know, so I just started asking. And then I also, you know, I was also asking questions like, because at that time, people would get in really big trouble for being werewolves, and they would get burnt at the stake like a witch would. And I thought, really? Wow, I'd love to turn into a wolf. And so I started asking kids, you know, like, wouldn't you love to turn into a wolf? And all the kids would go like, yeah! And I'd say, well, you know, if you did in the, in the 16th century, you'd get burned at the stake. And they go, ugh. Good thing it's not the 16th century. But. So I thought, like, what's wrong with being a wolf? All these questions and questions and questions and questions. And then eventually, if I can't get that question out of my head, then it becomes a book. And I write them down. I have all these ideas for books that I don't write. And I have all these notes for books I never write. But then every once in a while, I just recently got a, a note out of my idea file, and I'm, I'm, now I'm writing a book about it. And I wrote that note almost 10 years ago. So I really recommend writing down all your brilliant ideas. And that's how, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't get my, I don't really get the idea. I don't sit around like, like I need an idea for a book. I need an idea. What am I going to write about? I have so many ideas. I just have to pick one. You just have to have the time to, you know, walk around and think. As I was walking here today, in fact, I was, I'm always just keeping my eyes open and looking around. Didn't have one on the way here today, though. Didn't write anything down. I'll probably write something down from this interview, though. Maybe I'll write about a little video team who interviews people and all the power dynamics between like who gets to be the production manager and who gets to be the the host. You're not the production manager. Which is better? I'm the host. The host, yeah. Riley's the production manager. I'm the assistant production manager. Yeah. And who's more powerful? Me. You're more powerful? You think she's more powerful? Um, I think Riley's more powerful. That is my job. <laughs> Washing your bike or car with the spongy in bucket instead of a hose, it can save a lot of water. A hose can weigh six gallons per minute. If you leave it running, but using a bucket and sponge only uses a few gallons. Ask your parents to check if a car wash near you recycles water. Also, some car washers recycle water instead of letting it run down their driveway.